before, actually. I don't either. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Spring Equinox Wisdom Circle. I am Kristen Ziegers, your hostess. And I am here with my beautiful guests, Megan Hale and Kim Artist Singer. God, did I get it right? You got it close. Argus Singer. Argus Singer. <laughs> I practiced and everything. It's a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that hard. Um, welcome. Today is the last official day of winter, you guys. And I know we were just talking before we came on about how depending on where you are in the world, that might be hard to believe. <laughs> but um, it is the natural rhythms of Mother Earth and the universe are turning the wheel again and we welcome the spring equinox on tomorrow on tomorrow we welcome the spring equinox tomorrow so um what i'd like to do first is introduce my two guests and then we're going to um drop into a little meditation so um if you need to while i'm giving my introductions if you need to get yourself comfortable get yourself a glass of water um shut down any other distractions, any ringers on your phone or anything like that, um, this is your time to do that so that we can all be present and settled in for the meditation and then for the rest of the wisdom circle. So let me begin by introducing Megan Hale. Megan is the founder of Wild and Holy, a spiritual community of coaches, therapists, helpers, and healers who value expansion, growth, vulnerability, and bravery. Like mm -hmm. that even just sounds so spring energy to me. <laughs> yes. Um, she leads retreats and group programs for women and facilitates one-on-one -on -one coaching for both individuals and couples who crave more truth, trust, and transformation. Mm -hmm. She's the podcast host of The Enoughness Revolution, an intimate discussion on reclaiming worthiness and Wild and Holy Radio, the realist conversation on spirituality and creating a life that honors your soul. Through her own healing journey of self-sabotage and spiritual warfare, Megan learned the hard way, the damage we bring ourselves when we doubt our own belonging, deservingness, and divinity. She now teaches others how to step into their wild and holy truth, trust themselves more, and expand into their fullest expression to make their unique impact in the world. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thank you. And we have King Kim. <laughs> See, I'm so focusing on the last name now. Kim Argetsinger. I got, got it. it. <laughs> she is a success and mindset business coach with a mission to help you see what's possible and make it happen. Through private one-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching programs, and courses, Kim helps high-achieving, ambitious solopreneurs and coaches create their version of success from the inside out. As a former actress, she gets the artist brain, <laughs> which is really the creative brain, but like, I was reading this and I was like, I'm not an actress or consider myself an artist, but I definitely get this brain. Um, and the insecurities, fears, and constant stream of ideas that come with it and keep you up at night. She also understands what it's like to be a solopreneur, start your own passion-driven business, and the ups and downs that come with that. Mm. She's found her place helping ambitious, creative entrepreneurs expand and sharpen their vision, getting out of their own way, and taking inspired action to bring their business and life to the next level. Thank you, ladies, so much for joining me. <clears throat> Thanks for having me. Mm. Um, so now I invite everybody to just settle in and um, be here, be present for this time that you've given yourself. And I think that there are a lot of people that are going to be watching this on replay. So I invite you to, if you need to, take a minute and press pause on the replay, um, do so. Whatever you need to do to honor yourself and your energy so that you can give yourself the devoted time here um, to soak in all the goodness that we're gonna share. 
starting with uh, this meditation. So yeah, give yourself a nice deep breath. Let your eyes drift closed. Take a deep breath into your belly. Maybe even put your hands on your lower belly. And notice how when you inhale, the front of your body expands. Megan and Kim, can I ask you guys, or you know what, I can mute you for a second because I'm getting a little bit of an um, echo. There we go, perfect, thank you. Okay, so do that again. Inhale into your belly, letting the front of your body expand and pause, take a slight pause before you exhale fully, kind of allowing your abdominal muscles to contract with that exhale and pausing again at the bottom of that before you take in your next breath. Feel your body being held in the chair that you're sitting in or on or by the floor that's beneath you. Consider all the people and things that you've extended your energy to today scanning briefly over your day from the moment you woke up. Imagine like a maypole, your energy looks like ribbons extended out to your children, your partner, your animals, your to-do list, your worry about the future, your regret about the past, Right now, imagine there's a spool in the center of your body and begin rolling it in, drawing in all those ribbons to wind up around this magic spool, bringing back all of your energy. Allow yourself to be fully present here in your body and here with us for the next hour giving yourself the gift of your wholeness, your attention, and your thoughts. With your breath, feel the fullness of your energy body. Notice if your skin is tingling, if your mind has quieted a bit, if your breath has slowed down. In your mind's eye, imagine yourself sitting in a field of soft grass. Feel a gentle, cool breeze graze across the fine hairs that cover your arms and the back of your neck. The ground below you is soft and warm. Smell the faint sweetness of honeysuckle and jasmine being carried in by the breeze. Now imagine there's a seed about the size of your fist planted in the earth about a foot below where you're sitting. This seed represents a wish you made last fall, months ago. Maybe it was a goal you set for yourself a prayer you extended for a part of your life that needed a change. Maybe it was something you wanted to experience, something you wanted to heal, or something you wanted to manifest into your life. You planted this seed with your intention, and it has been soaking in the nourishment of your thoughts, your actions, and your visions this winter. It knows the wisdom of Mother Earth and has been waiting for the fresh energy of spring to begin to take sprout. The seed's hard protective shell has begun to crack, revealing a bright Kelly green vine that begins to unravel and extend up towards the surface of the earth. Winter was a restful time, a time of contemplation and processing. All you want to create in your life needed this season to take root. 
the power of your visions and the internal work you did over the past few months is an essential part of the life cycle of your dreams. What was that wish you made? What was that intention you planted, either overtly or subtly? What is it that you've been desiring? That is the energy of this spring vine as it uncoils and grows up through your energy body, reaching towards the sun as it passes your root chakra, telling you you're safe to want whatever it is that the seed represents for you. Up past your sacral chakra, telling you you are a creative force capable of bringing your dreams to life. Up past your solar plexus chakra, reminding you of your power to move whatever is keeping you from realizing your vision. Up past your heart chakra, soaking this vine of your intention with pure, unconditional love. As it grows up past your throat chakra, you are emboldened to declare that this manifestation is coming to you and soon. Further up past your third eye chakra where you're given the next step you need to take towards creating your new reality. And up through the crown chakra at the top of your head where the energy of your wish sees the sun and is blessed by the power of the divine. Golden light touches this vine and is carried down the length of it back down through your energy body, radiating out to fill your entire body and just beyond it with the most beautiful, golden, sparkly light. This light shoots down to where the seed is planted, creating a connection between heaven and earth that moves right through you. What is your wish? What is your intention? What is the first step you can take towards realizing this wish in your life? Feeling this vibrant energy flowing from your crown to your root and radiating out in all directions, find yourself in that field again. Only this time, you notice a small fire in front of you. Opening up your perspective, you see that you're sitting in a circle a group of gentle, smiling faces surrounding this fire. That golden, sparkly light is radiating from everyone there, and you feel a sense of belonging. You feel hope, and you feel empowered to begin the journey to bring your wish to life. And you know now that everything is happening in perfect timing, and you're not alone. You are never alone. So sit with the sensations in your body for a moment as you give yourself another deep belly breath. Then slowly exhaling, open your eyes. Okay. There we go, unmuted. Welcome back. How was that, ladies? Magical. That was amazing. <laughs> really good. Wonderful. Um, I, when I was writing that meditation, I was really trying to call in the, that vine energy, right? I was just reading... Um, I know for anyone who's watching that watched my winter solstice webinar or wisdom circle, that's when it got the wisdom circle name. Um, the meditation took us down a spiraling path um, that went down and that's the nature of the energy of winter. It's, it's a downward spiral where we go inward and in springtime, we follow that spiral back up again. And it's like that vine right, that was planted deep in the earth that courageously broke through its shell and is moving towards the light again. And that is the energy of spring. You see it, have, I see it happening all around me. 
um, when I look in nature, which is my guide and my wisdom keeper, um, and my solace. So um, that energy is the energy of the element of wood. So you guys know that I have a background in feng shui, which is really <clears throat> so based on the principles of nature and the five elements that in Eastern philosophy, the world is made up of and wood is one of them. And that's the energy of spring. And it offers that upward growth energy, that expansiveness, that energy of creation, um, which is so different than the energy of winter, right? Does that bring anything, does that conjure any images or um, memories or stories for you guys? I'm curious. Hmm. Or what does it make you think of? I'll, I'll jump in. I don't want to want to cut anyone off. I was just thinking as you were saying that I've been thinking a lot about just the idea of growth in our business and how we often plant seeds and they're underground and we can't see what's happening. We can't see the roots that are forming or what's growing underground. And it's so easy, I think, for see it with myself, I see it with clients to want to dig those seeds up because and kind of toss them aside or keep messing with them instead of it. What you made me think of is we have seasons in our business, we have seasons in work, and there's a season in winter where we want to plant that seed and it's growing under the ground and it will break through to the earth. It will give us that green vine. It will grow, but we have to give it that time to be underground and to nurture it and to let it be. And that was just what came to mind for me. And just thinking of a big, strong oak tree and it needs that time underground to grow all those roots. And that's, that's what you made me think of, which is, I love trees as well. So I'm gonna now look at every tree differently. And I love the image of the oak tree. Absolutely love it. I think, you know, for me, most of my life, I've wanted to be in certain seasons over others. <laughs> I like the seasons that are full of growth there's all this forward momentum and it's been excruciating for me at times to release that desire to be in that season all the time. And I think the older I've gotten and especially having children now, it's given me like permission to really find joy in the other seasons where things are more dormant and they're growing underneath the soil because it's just makes it more, I don't know, more meaningful when you start to see those intentions start to take root and grow through and shine and knowing that you have been giving them space to do what they need to do on their own timing instead of rushing them to fruition, you know? Mm, I love that you guys both bring that up, that, that, and it, and it, to me, it, it begs the question, what is required of us, right? To allow that to happen to not go in and mess with it and want it to be faster or um, want to be in another season than when you are. And that's kind of where in that meditation that hope came in. And I think faith and trust mm. are really important to know, to, to have a deep knowing that that's happening even though we can't see it, right? Not an easy thing, right? And, and it's, it's cool too, Megan, to think about like our children and um, how sometimes we can be so eager for them to get on to the next phase, like, oh, when we're just like potty <laughs> trains or when we're just sleeping through the night or whatever. Um, <laughs> But what we can, uh, that's the time when we really need faith, trust, like this season will transition into the next, which will come with its own, you know, gifts and challenges. They all do. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, can we be gentle and allow, right? Yes. And, and for the season of spring, I often, talk about 
you know, New Year's resolutions and, and how people, the way that our society or our culture looks at the new year as the fresh start. And, and I really think of that time as the time when you start to vision and you start to dream about what you want for the next year. But it's not until spring, like um, when that yang energy, so yin and yang, each season has, is at a different phase of that yin and yang cycle. Winter is the most yin, the most internal, the most feminine of the seasons. And spring is emerging yang. So that's where, where summer is full yang, high energy, outward, masculine. Um, that is just starting to brew up in spring. And I can feel that as far as setting my goals and looking ahead to what I want to create, like really getting much more action oriented. Um, and... I can only have the energy to do that because I've taken the time to rest and mm -hmm. restore, mm -hmm. um, which is that yin, that feminine energy. But I don't, do you guys feel it? Like I get, and I, I love the play with words too, like spring in your step, right? I mean, we know it's like a spring, but to me, I'm like, it's that spring in your step. It's that, that little, those little bursts of energy that come where you start to say, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to like, take action and watch that seed that's been planted sprout up and kind of direct it. And that's the wood energy too, is, is the energy of direction where we take these ideas and these visions that we have and we start to give them form. So I love springtime for more of the goal setting and real, um, planning for action does that resonate with you guys on so many levels yes it's mm -hmm. definitely i was sharing with the ladies before we started i used to live in both miami and in california which are pretty much it's summer year round and i tend to be a naturally action oriented person which can be to my own detriment and i now live in new york city which has seasons and as you were sharing that kristen i was just thinking one of the things i love about living in new york is seeing the actual seasons and the weather change and it forces me to pay attention to the seasons in my life and it forces me to slow down or approach my work in a different way than i did when i was always in beautiful weather and i found this past winter very specifically forcing i don't want to use the word force but encouraging myself to take more space and to plant those seeds and intentionally to not do certain things and i as to just to what you were saying those seeds have been planted and just the past few days even just walking to the gym this morning i felt that spring in my step and i can feel how that space has led to new ideas or they're ready they're ready for a different type of action so i everything you're saying just resonates and it's something that i just see in such a different way that i didn't notice before when when i lived in california so i love love what you're sharing was that how how when you talk about um encouraging is that what you said encouraging encouraging <laughs> <laughs> um was that challenging for you or yes. what was the result of of actually giving yourself permission to kind of pause or slow down on some of your maybe more natural inclinations to just go, go, go. Sure. So yes, it was challenging, beyond challenging my, my brain, my body. It's not my natural state. It's not what I like. So much resistance, so much, I think of my natural program in my brain thinks I can't achieve or have what I want if I'm not always doing. Mm -hmm. And I know, yeah, <laughs> I know as a coach, this isn't true. I work with other people. I mean, it's easier to see that in other people when it's something we've gone through ourselves. So I know this not to be true, but I still have a hard time with it. So encouraging myself to do this came with a lot of resistance and a lot of story that it meant I wouldn't be productive or that I wouldn't be growing or that I wouldn't be moving forward or that I was lazy. And the irony, of course, and Kristen, I'm sure you know, I'm sure Megan, you know this just with the work you do. The irony is that I think in that space that I encouraged myself to have, I think I actually grew and was more present in my work 
maybe there wasn't the same doing, but I went deeper in certain areas. I had growth that I didn't expect. I had created the space to have ideas that I don't think I would have had quite honestly. Otherwise, I think I was opened up to clients who are amazing that I think I would have just been hurrying past or maybe not even connected with. Um, and it just makes me think of what you were talking about with that seed and that time we need to let it be underground that naturally for me, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's great. But I'm just going to skip that. I'm just going to go right to it popping through the earth, but that, it, that doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. And even within the growth or that space, we can still, there's still roots forming and there's still growth underground. So I still found within the space more growth than I would have expected, if, if that makes sense. I totally, totally relate to that. I think, you know, um, I'm a type A naturally, which type A's have a lot of strengths and they also tend to be more like anxiety driven, (laughs) more frenzied. And we actually tend to find a lot of, I mean, for me personally, I found a lot of worthiness and importance in the busier that I was. And what I've noticed is I've kind of my energy was very scattered on a lot of different things. And my mind was always going and trying to maintain all of these different lists of all the things I needed to do. And what's happened over the past few years is one, I was afraid that if I slowed down, that my goals would not come to fruition. That was a very real fear for me. And to lean into trust that I would arrive right on time if I started to slow down was a really hard transition for me to make. And now, the place that I like to work from is feeling very rooted, very deliberate, very intentional, and very slow. And that goes like that rubs up so much against my natural inclination to go and do and fast and go and da da da. But I have found that I don't really like being in that energy as much because I start to feel scattered and out of control. And I start to kind of cling to different ideas that might not be as aligned for where I really want to go and what I really want to create. So doing the the hard work, the uncomfortable work of learning to slow down of learning to allow versus force work from more of a feminine energy um, has definitely given me so much permission to be more rooted and slow and deliberate and intentional. And that feels so much more like home to me now where it's just, it makes me feel calm. And that's such a good feeling to feel that sense of peace and to be in charge of how it feels while I'm pursuing instead of feeling like that thing I'm pursuing is in charge of how I feel. That makes sense. Totally. I'm, I resonate with all of that as a, <laughs> as a natural type A, similar to exactly everything you're, you're sharing. And there is such a beauty that comes within the space and and allowing, I love the word allowing, allowing ourselves that space and trusting. I think Kristen, that goes to what you were talking about with the hope, trusting that there will be the growth. And I think even if we're looking at the seasons, knowing that this season has come before, it'll come again and it's going to pass. And I, I get so much, I get so many lessons from the city itself. And then that's one of the cities one of the city's lessons to me has been you've you've experienced winter before and you're going to experience it again and it's also going to pass and you made it through that harsh winter before and you grew in that winter and you're going to enjoy spring and that's also going to pass and there's been something in that which is um, almost a surrendering to time is going to pass and these things are going to happen but if you go with the current you can have the growth and the movement for versus what my natural is going to what you were saying with the type A tendency. My natural tendency is to want to just fight it and to dip into that masculine and just try, try to control it and have it. No, I will, I will be in spring and winter or be summer and winter instead of just trying to go with, go with the flow. Have you found too, Kim, that it's changed the way that you plan your year and the things that you're going to put on your plate? Cause I know for me, um, the more I've gotten more rooted and I'm starting to go into my planning season for my business or even my life, I have much more realistic expectations for what I can do well and actually achieve. And it's almost like I've, um, I'm doing less, much better than trying to do way too much. Not that great. (laughs) 
<laughs> a thousand from nodding yes, a thousand and ten percent. I was talking to a client about this recently. I think it's been my whole thing has been about going deeper instead of wider and doing yeah less yes. better and putting. I think a year or two ago. I hope that background noise. I have city noise isn't messing us up. But I feel the same thing. I was just like, I'm gonna do all the things and I'm going to have all the offerings versus now it's a lot more intentional and focused and going to do one thing. Yes. And I'm not even allowed to touch anything. I have a notebook of ideas and I can add to that notebook, but I'm not allowed to touch anything in that notebook until this idea is complete. And then even just with what I think you were touching on, just the expectations around the growth. I'm so big into slow growth, an oak tree, Me that's too. slow growth versus a weed and taking, having the expectation that it's going to be slow growth and that's where we get the strength from versus trying to be a fly by night overnight weed that gets mm-hmm. eaten out the next day. I love that so much. Mm-hmm. Thank you for asking that because I, I, I feel like all three of us, it's just this, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Kristen, you're magic. <laughs> Another something that really came up to me in listening to you guys too is um, in talking about cycling is our own cycles as women. Um, I looked at the people who signed up and it's all women that signed up to watch this. I open it up to everybody, but it's the ladies that that are tuning in. So um, we all have, you know, a uh, spring season in our own cycles as well. And this is part of my daily practice when I, um, I actually come down here. This is my little altar space. This is my new spring altar that I set up this weekend. Um, and I tune into the season of nature that's that we're in right now. And then I tune into my own season. And right now I happen to be in my spring season, which is the follicular phase. If you guys track your cycles at all, um, you know, it's the same cycle yin and yang, similar to what goes on in nature goes on with us as women. And when you're menstruating, that's winter, that's your most internal time, then comes spring. Um, the follicular time, then ovulation and ovulation is the same energy as summer, that really outward, very dynamic energy. And then you start to turn back inward a little bit again, as you go into the luteal phase before your cycle begins again. And I just think that again, like when you're talking about planning, planning your business for the year, looking ahead, I really, I know for me that when I'm in my winter of my cycle, that is not time for me to go out to networking meetings. That is not time for me to, um, if I can help it, do things like this. Although this actually is really super nourishing for me. So, um, but to get up and like run a workshop or something like that, um, that is not something that's well suited to me. So I try to plan that way when I can as well. I feel so incredibly cut off from that (laughs) because for like in September, it'll be three years that I've either been pregnant or nursing a baby. And I've only had one cycle, like Mm. one menstruation in the past, that that whole time. Mm. So being like in the fourth trimester right now, where I'm, I'm almost out of the fourth trimester. There's so, so much that I'm like curious about of like learning to, see other signs of like the emotional cycle that my body is going through, even though it's not going through like the physical menstruation cycle. And it's just something I'm starting to become more aware of because I have no idea when my cycle is going to come back. Last time it took seven and a half months and then I had one cycle and got pregnant again. So we'll just have to see how that goes. But I love that you're so in tune with that. And I think it's a great time for me to start learning and being more aware of what that looks like for me moving forward. Oh, I love that you are starting to pay attention to the emotional signs. There's lots of women too that have either gone through menopause or they've had hysterectomies or whatever reason, um, don't have those, all of those physical symptoms anymore. Um, and we can do it with the cycles of the moon as well. Cause as women, mm-hmm. we cycle with the moon, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and and when you look at we just had a new moon over the weekend and the new moon is the winter 
It is the darkness, mm -hmm. the yin of, um, of the moon cycles. So we are in that regard coming into spring as well. And the full moon is the full expression, the most yang expression of the moon, like summer. And that's, you know, the whole howling at the moon and, you know, the tides coming really high and, and all of the, the physical things that happen in the world in relation to those cycles of the moon. So that's another way that you can kind of start to just pay attention and see if your own energetic system aligns with that kind of seasonal energy of the moon cycles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. And Megan, congratulations. I didn't know. I didn't know. So congrats. Chris and I was going to share, well, share with both of you just how much I don't track my business to my cycle, but I, up until four years ago, had always been on birth control. So I had pretty much completely masked the, my cycle and any sort of awareness. And it's not the same at all as being pregnant, but just in the way that I had no... I was not in touch at all with what was happening. And since I've been off, it has been really fascinating, not easy, really fascinating to just see the ups and downs and just what the effect is on my mood, on my energy, on my productivity. And as a type A natural type person, I of course don't like that. And I wanted to go back on birth control to mask all of that, which I can't because I have ironically, the universe, I have a um, genetic disorder that makes it actually not great for me to go on birth mm -hmm. control. But I just feel like that was a bit of the universe and a bit of medicine for me as to, you've been on this path, keep paying attention to this, pay attention to what these different fluctuations are. And I love that you track your work to that, to your cycle, because hearing that for me just makes me think maybe there's a way to embrace this, I've tried, been trying to embrace it from the perspective of I'm embracing my femininity, but to embrace it in my work versus trying to work against it or trying to push through those dips in energy or the interesting mood swings that I have. So, you know, the way that it shows up the most for me is with creativity. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that I have like, there's these creative spurts and then there'll be those moments where like nothing new is coming in. Like there's no downloads coming and I'm like, oh my gosh, is this creativity ever going to come back? And of course it always <laughs> does. <laughs> but creativity for me is like that fire, that passion. It's like, that's the thing that makes me feel most alive when my mind is clicking and I'm dreaming and I'm visioning. And then sometimes it gets murky and not clear. And that lack of clarity, I often used to have like this story around it that I was confused or I didn't know what I wanted or I didn't know what I was doing. And I realized that's just part of the phase where it's like everything's integrating. And if I just were to release the negative story around it of saying, oh, nothing's wrong here, mm -hmm. right? It gives me such a, a more loving, compassionate space to just be in and it's no big deal knowing that the clarity is going to come in the next few days and like clockwork, it always, always does. And I love that ability to just trust myself in that process and that cycle because before, Oh my gosh, I would beat myself up so much. Like thought I had to be on or no all the time, which is completely unrealistic. I am curious. Do you notice because you are pregnant and you could notice that with your cycle, do you see, that showing up differently while you're pregnant in terms of the creative cycle? So when I was pregnant with my first, the first trimester was no create, like totally zapped because all of my creative energy, think about it, was creating this new baby, you know? And then the second trimester, I started feeling more like myself, that creativity reemerged, my energy came back. And then the third trimester, it kind of dipped again because I think it was time to turn inward and really prepare for this baby. And then with my second child, I mean, it, the pregnancy was just so different. I think I knew a little bit more what to expect. So I don't think it was as, it, was, it wasn't as big of a contrast then because I was noticing there was this natural rhythm to things. And if the creativity dipped, I'm like, it's okay, it'll come back just like it did last time. But this last pregnancy in my third trimester, I was actually going through a launch for my business. I was opening up a pretty long cart. It was about a month long of welcoming women into this year-long container I'm doing this year. And I just remember feeling like the, the expectations I put on myself are so much more rooted and I think realistic for what 
energy I had to put out in that area while also still attending to like my body and my baby. And you know what? He was born January 3rd. So I love that we're doing this because like my winter has literally been in my little baby bubble and I'm just now starting to like reemerge into the online space, into my business full time. So it's like perfect, perfect timing for that. It's so interesting. Yeah. I know. So, I love it. The, the other piece, like the wood, the wood element in traditional Chinese medicine, the elements relate to different organs in our bodies. And the wood element that represents spring is related to our liver. And the liver is the storehouse of purpose, decisiveness, and courage. Mm. Isn't that beautiful? And so that, like, everything you're talking about, like this, and I have this on my little notes here. It says sense of purpose. Like, I, I really want to um, bring up this notion that spring is a time that emerges the sense of purpose. And it's the same as the seed. It's the same as you coming out of kind of that inner time. And so can we now, I want to like offer people some things that um, they can do to kind of honor this energy that we've been talking about for spring, this new beginning, this emerging and, and growing forth, if you will. So um, for me, the practice that I've been, I've been doing is really kind of looking back at the work, the internal work I did over the winter of what I wanted my life to look like, how I wanted to feel, what I wanted to embody for the next year. And now I'm looking ahead saying, okay, this is the spring equinox. In three months time, it'll be the summer mm -hmm. solstice. What do I want at summer solstice? What do I want to look back at and see almost like seeing your baby, seeing the, the, the tree take root and sprout up and grow? Like, what do I want to um, witness and be a part of growing and coming to be over that time um, and really connect it deeply to my sense of purpose that goes along with that, that energetic connection to the liver and to the element of wood. Do you guys have practices that, um, that you incorporate and, and maybe you didn't consciously do it now, but that, that attach to your purpose and kind of start to take action on? So I do this a little bit differently and this might sound very weird, <laughs> um, which is very different than how I used to operate. So a season is about three months, 90 days. And that actually feels really short for me to plan goals. So I like to actually look six months in advance because that feels spacious. And I look at where do I want to be six months from now? What do I want my physical health to look like? My physical practice of nourishing my body to look like by then? What do I want my spiritual practices to be like? What do I want to be making room for? What are my business goals? What are some of the things I will be launching around that time? And I get really clear on that six months out and then I scale it back. I kind of put all of these little tiny steps in place to create that growth. And I don't really, so by the time we're in summer, right? It's kind of like I'm already starting to move in that direction and then it's time to look at the next six months. So it's like I'm doing a six month vision kind of every three months and giving myself lots of space and ease to kind of work through in that. I'm very, very similar to Megan. I don't, I don't know if I realize I was doing it by seasons, but I'm really big on just future planning and I won't geek out now, but just what it does in our brain and how, how important that is. But I similarly, I, I, now that I embrace space, I have found short time periods to feel constrictive. So I look a year out and then from there, break that into a half a year. And then I guess it is about three months, it's about 90 days. And from that, I'm working backwards to a month at a time and then back from that into a week. But it's always with this much longer vision and with that again the space and 
I actually have a part of my business, I call it my nurturing time. And so that I think very much speaks to what we're talking about, baking in or creating that space for the nurturing of whether it's clients or my work or something I'm working on, but very much from the long view forward and then going, going backwards to now. So yeah, I like what you're talking about. I like having um, themes kind of tend to pop up for like the month. So like right now, March is all about getting into routine. So I've had a lot of transition in my life with this new baby, the second baby coming in and other (laughs) personal things happening and so March is really about finding a, a routine that works for me where I'm starting to really get into that structure because I structure really is supportive for me. And I know how to, to function at my highest level when I'm kind of in that routine. So that's what March is about. April is moving more into focusing on my physical well-being of really getting more into my physical body and setting some fitness goals for myself and starting to get that routine kind of going. So I'm always kind of adding just one new thing in a month where I can really dedicate my whole self and my whole energy to that instead of having like 9 million areas of my life that I'm trying to focus on in a short 30 day period. It's so much for you to cognitively keep track of. So of course, it's going to be difficult for us to energetically keep track of all of those things. And I have found that's like a huge permission slip too, of just say, this is our focus for the month. Let's really hone in, put all of our energy there. And what I've noticed is that it's really turned into this like energy maintenance or management practice of like, I am managing where my energy is going to go and where it flows. And I've noticed that I can accomplish so much when I have a lot of my energy going to just one or two areas. I love that. And I'm similar. And it just, as you were saying that, it makes me think I was talking about my book of ideas that I keep for, for another season for later. I find it also having that one focus gives me permission to say no to things and not just no to things we hear all the time, but no to the things I want to do opportunities that seem great or projects or invitations to certain things because I know that's not my focus whether it's for the month or three months so it it takes the pressure off because otherwise it's easy for me to feel like it's an opportunity I should say yes or I want to help that person and I just find like it it's like a weight off because this is where I'm this is the season this is what I'm focusing on right now so I as you were saying that just made me made me think about that and Chris, and it just, I love, I never thought about it from the seasons of the year, but it very much is in, in tune with that. I'm just thinking about what I've been setting up moving forward and it coincides with spring. And I didn't even realize till we were speaking, I started my business in March and spring, however many years ago. So I just, I love the, I love that without even knowing it kind of taps in into the nature element of it. Mm-hmm. Intuitiveness. And it and nature is the language that I use, right? That is my kind of channel to take all these lessons that we know and we teach. Um, and it's just my little nature is my muse. So I just use that. But, but it, in feng shui, I call it intuitive feng shui. It's our intuition. Um, yeah, and I just want to point out that in tomorrow, I'm going to send an email with the recording and with um, how you can connect with Megan and Kim, and they have some special gifts to offer you guys, and I also have a spring cleaning club that I'm starting, and this is what's making me think of this, is, is um, it's, it, this is going to be, how many weeks did I say? Five weeks. It's a five-week club it's where we take a different room in your house every week and we look at we will incorporate some of the feng shui in it and when you were talking about themes for the month we're going to have themes as we move through and I kind of look at themes in a different way month to month Um, I do an umbrella theme like January's theme was courage and this is all related to um principles of nature rooted in feng shui which comes from nature so it's a natural energetic to be looking at so when we look at courage and can we apply that filter to our business to our bodies to our relationships um, to our parenting 
our creative endeavors. Um, and it's kind of a filter I put over it and where I can ask myself too, what's the most courageous thing I could do right now? Because that's the, in the natural alignment of the energy that's around me and moving through me. Um, I, I, just, I, I love how we all have subtly different approaches, um, but really they're all rooted in alignment is something that keeps coming up. Um, and even just rooted, right? Where we allow you guys as self-proclaimed type A's, that I'm not a type A. <laughs> That's not me. Um, I have to work harder at that. Well, I have to consciously incorporate more of those masculine energies now. It was different when I was younger, but at this phase of my life, in this season of my life, right? If I were to look at my whole lifespan and consider, I haven't done that, consider like what season might represent this stage of life for me. I don't know, I have to think about that. But um, I have to be more conscious about it. Um, and doing this, my the theme work the way I do, and I do similar things. I vision out like a year and six months, but I, I uh, reverse engineer from about three months out. Um, but I just love how they're subtly different approaches, but really so similar. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, this other note I have right here, I just want to share this because I feel like this makes sense listening to you guys talking about what it takes for being, um, really ambitious action oriented women. Um, the highest expression of the wood element and, um, and, and of a healthy liver, energetic liver, is compassion. You know that I love that. <laughs> you can't see, but I have goosebumps. <laughs> yeah. And that's how we know we're in harmony. That's how we know that we're in alignment, right? when compassion is something that we can grant ourselves and others with ease, right? It's, it's a clue on the right path. Ah, oh, there's so many things, like there's so many different things that we could go into, but how are you guys feeling about what we've been sharing? Is there any like kind of overarching um, messages or anything that's bubbled up for you that has been good ahas over the course of this past hour oh yes for sure <laughs> okay, so so much goodness i think there's <laughs> I, I feel like i'm going to get off the phone and just need to go journal a bit i've just loved i, I really love the tie into the wood and and to nature and just thinking about productivity for me, I hear it that way, but just thinking about it from a different space, it just ties in for me so much more into that spaciousness and that flow and that ease and allowing versus the pushing. So I think that's probably what's coming up the most for me. And that allowing. I yeah, and I love that. Yeah, I think when we were doing our meditation and you were talking about the seeds that we planted, I mean, back in the fall, I started getting these just little pieces of inspiration for the next direction of my business and I knew that like inspiration always comes in waves for me it'll give me like a little tidbit and then it moves away from me for a while and it'll come back in gives me another little tidbit and moves away and that used to be a very infuriating process because I wanted it all right now on my timing but learning to work in divine timing has been such a gift but like seriously on Friday, I had my coaching call with my business coach and I shared like this, like all the pieces had finally arrived for the next step. So that seed that I planted like back in the winter that I was just kind of, I'm just going to let it stay there. The pieces will fall into place. I'll get all the information. It was, I smiled to myself while you were saying that I'm like, Oh my gosh, like the last Friday before spring, it all arrived. And, and I know the next step. So that's, it's so cool to see how things just naturally line up, you know, with, with good old mother earth who's always taking care of us in magical ways. Yeah. I love that so much. 
harmony is the natural state of mother earth and it's our natural state too yeah where we're, mm. nervous, where we're resisting then we can find our way back to harmony i feel like you know <laughs> if there was one message that i think the earth gives me is it's what's the rush mm. Mm. love I it love that i think for me as you were saying that my message from mother earth is always you can't stop trying to control everything. You can't, mm -hmm. there's going to be a storm or there's going to be a cloud and that's beautiful. And that's, it's going to pass and that's what's going to come. But stop trying to control everything. Mm -hmm. I think what came up for me the most, just as we're reflecting here and as you were sharing was just that idea that even when we can't see the growth with those seeds we've planted, even when we're in a season that seems maybe dormant, there's still so much growth happening and there's so much going on and, and it doesn't always have to look like, growth through this way it can be growth this way and or even like i think of it as like an integration period where that seed is really drawing in all mm -hmm. the nurturing elements that mm -hmm. it needs to sprout forward mm -hmm. and that integration is just so potent it is some potent potent medicine mm -hmm. for how you step forward in the world and if we can just learn how to honor that and slow down and to trust mm -hmm. trust sure. is such a huge component of that but it is so beautiful just to witness that. So I just appreciate the space you've created today, Kristen. To even like, I mean, having a seven minute meditation as a new mom to two is like such a gift. Awesome. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for that. Amazing. Yeah, thank you for, you are just so incredible. You're, you are just all sorts of magic. Every time I talk to you, I feel like I have just, it's like a blanket of love and then with that there's a new spark of an idea and your mm. pure magic and megan is as you were sharing that about the seed and everything i just thought about you and where you're at with your pregnancy and i just thought you were quite in your body you're creating that magic and it's been so amazing to connect with you you're just oh, likewise everything you share is like yes yes so thank you likewise. So, we'll connect after this call for sure definitely that's so sweet it's so true. I've known you for a while and it's always, I'm going to, I'm giving you a shout out here for anyone who's watching. I've known Kristen for a while. We were in coach training together and there's a reason I'm still connected to her. She is, this is, this is just truth. She's magic and pure love and pure compassion. And she is just, she ignites thought and inspiration in a really beautiful way. And I, I have so much love for you. Mm. I know. I agree, Kristen. And like, you have this capacity to really let people tune into their own wisdom. Like we all have our own answers. We can tap into our own cycles and our own seasons and just listen to like, look at the wisdom that's all around us. Mm -hmm. Every single time I talk to you, you give me some little piece. I'm like, oh my gosh, I intuitively did that. It's very affirming, mm -hmm. very affirming. So thank you. Yeah. Truth. Thank you. Thank you guys. Oh, beautiful. Do you have I know we're at an hour, but I had a poem that I wanted to close with. Do you guys have oh, a poem? Please, I'd love to hear it. I love to end in this way. You guys are so sweet. Thank you for that it's, it's reflection. Truth, we see it. <clears throat> okay, uh, this is called Spring. It's by Rumi. Mm. Again, the violet bows to the lily. Again, the rose is tearing off her gown. The green ones have come from the other world. Tipsy like the breeze up to some new foolishness. Again, near the top of the mountain, the anemone's sweet features appear. The hyacinth speaks formally to the jasmine. Mm -hmm. Peace be with you and peace to you, lad. Come walk with me in this meadow. Oops. Again, there are Sufis everywhere. The bud is shy, but the wind removes her veil suddenly. My friend, the friend is here like water in the stream, like a lotus on the water. The Narcissus winks at the wisteria whenever you say, and the clove to the willow, you are the one I hope for. The willow replies, consider these chambers of mine yours, welcome. 
the apple orange why the frown so that those who mean harm will not see my beauty the ring dove comes asking where where is the friend with one note the nightingale indicates the rose again the season of spring has come and a spring source rises under everything a moon sliding from the shadows many things must be left unsaid because it's late, but whatever conversation we haven't had tonight, we'll have tomorrow. <laughs> Sweet. Love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I honor both of you and I wish you a beautiful spring and I can't wait to connect again. And everybody else, you will learn how to connect with these beautiful souls um, in my follow-up email. So keep an eye out for that. Yay, spring! Yay, Yay. spring! Love you. <laughs> Thanks, Kristen. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, Kim. Bye, Megan. Thank you both. This has been beautiful. Happy spring. Happy spring. <laughs>